Access includes a number of built-in date functions that you can use in expressions to work with dates. In this video, I'll show you how to use the Expression Builder to get started with date functions and how to get more information about them. The Expression Builder provides an easy way to research functions and then add them to a database. One thing to keep in mind is that not all functions are available in every context. The Expression Builder will only show you the functions that are appropriate for each one. So to get started, I'll open the invoice list report in Layout View. I've already added a text box for due date. I'll open the properties for this control by selecting it and then clicking Property Sheet on the Design tab. I'll click in the Control Source property box and then I'll click the Build button to open the Expression Builder. In other contexts, I can open the Expression Builder by clicking the Build or Builder button or by clicking the word Expression in a list. In some cases, Access will open the Expression Builder for me automatically as I am designing an object. I'll click More to display the Expression Elements lists. I'll expand the Functions tree, click Built-in Functions, and then click Date Time in the middle list. The right-hand list changes to show me the available date and time functions. In general, the date functions let you break a date down into its component parts, add or subtract date values, or create date values from the current system date or other calculations. As I click on each function, a short description of the function appears at the bottom of the Expression Builder. I'm looking for a function that will let me add a specific number of months to a date, and it looks like the date add function will do what I want. If I click the link at the bottom of the dialog box, Access shows me the help for this function. I see that the interval argument is a string expression that can have these values, and that the number and date arguments are pretty self-explanatory. I'll close the help window and then double-click the function to add it to the expression box. Now I need to replace these placeholders with valid arguments. I'll start with the date argument and work my way backwards. I want to add to invoice date, so I'll select the placeholder and then just start typing invoice. IntelliSense displays a list of possible identifiers for me to select from. Here's my invoice date text box, so I'll double click it to select it. I want to add three months to the invoice date, so I'll click the number placeholder and replace it with a three. Notice how the Quick Info tooltip helps me keep track of where I am in the argument list. If I want, I can click the function name in this tooltip to open the help topic again. Finally, I'll click the interval argument placeholder and replace it with an M for month. This argument is a string, so I need to include the double quotes. That looks good, so I'll click OK, and Access adds the expression to the control source property box. I switch to Report View, and the calculation looks good. On each row, the Due Date column shows a date that is exactly three months after the invoice date. The Expression Builder helped me select the correct function and add it to my report.